um adam you you mentioned there's a spiritual responsibility and then there's a personal responsibility and and then i i would also agree say that there is also the systematic responsibility as well yeah um I don't, yeah you know like i i was thinking uh today about the uh you know talk about faith uh the book of esther and in the book of esther there is a, an eventual overthrowing of of one person in one empire if you will to protect the people of god so two things had to happen one the people of god they need to pray there was a personal responsibility we have something to do with this but then there was also the the overthrowing of the guy who was doing the oppression as well the person who was in charge of the system that actually would then destroy god's people that person needs to be overthrown as well and so there we as we are dealing with the personal responsibility ourselves may that then also spur us on to say like the system needs to change as well mm. that we need to be we need to be putting people in legislations putting people in government spaces that that have a a healthy mind that have gone through all the things that we're talking about so that they're able to actually create the change so that our children's children have it way better off than 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 we did so not only is there our own personal responsibility to remove the, the the speck out of our eye but there is a systematic speck plank wall fence whatever that needs to be removed as well and we all do that by doing that uh do that together andrew um we 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 have a, a lot of friends uh well you have a lot of friends because you're the most popular one out of all of us anyways um, facts um, all right super cap. all right super that's cap all right what it is like we all we all cap. like that's what it is don't let, don't get me started listen Andrew, he's such, he has such wise oh, words. Stop um, we like, but we we have a number of friends of ours um, who happen to be white, and many of them are asking, "How can I get involved? What can I do? How can I? How can I? How can I help?" You know, we have some who are who are involved in community community programs, working with teenagers. Uh, we have others who are involved in nonprofits or working in schools, and they're asking that question probably the thing I got the most out of all of those DMs and emails, and everything else is what can I do? I don't want to this, this to, to leave me. I'm bothered by this. And Adam hit it on the head to be bothered, not today, but tomorrow. And the day after that, what are some practical things that we need to do to be able to then to give them some help to kind of say like, here's some things that you guys can be doing. Uh, like, I think um, first I want to say just, uh, you know, something about the kingdom. This issue of racism, racism is not a hate issue. It's ultimately a sin issue. And because it's a sin issue, the church, I want to speak most specifically to white church America and white church Canada needs to arise and deal with this sin issue. And so in doing that, they need to ask the questions. They need to start raising a little bit of a ruckus and speaking out church leaders, district leaders, um, superintendents of different denominations need to start speaking out and start to say that this is wrong. And they might not necessarily need to touch on the race, but just touch on saying injustice is wrong and speak on injustice. And so, you know, they need to speak out and ask the questions of, to black people, how can I help? So what they've been doing to us all week, if they don't know, let them ask. And we need to be okay with them asking and being okay with them saying, okay, this is how you need to maybe approach this or go at this angle or do this. But here's the other thing uh, that I want to say is when people ask or people say things that us as black people don't jump on them. Because what I've seen a little bit online is I see someone say a, a remark or a quote and it might be a little bit off or it might be, it could have been said better. And all of a sudden they're lambasted for it. If we want everyone to be our allies, why are we attacking them and beating them up? We can honestly just DM them or we can quietly say, hey, you probably could have said that better. Um, I know where you're going. Thank you. But let's, let's move on. But instead we want to attack them and just lay them out there to be, you know, trampled on and beat up. And why would anybody want to help us if we're attacking them. And so I think as black people, we've got to be able to allow people to speak, encourage them to speak, and when they're not so right, correct them, but allow them to ask the question, how can we help? Allow them to ask the question, hey, you know, am I doing this right? Mm -hmm. Ask them, allow them to ask the question, but white America, white Canada, we need to get people to the table. We need to get people on the police advisory boards. We need to get people talking to their mayors, to their politicians, yeah. to their whatever. We need the church leaders to do that 
because in order for things to change, it can't just be us speaking. We yeah. need everyone's help to speak on this. Yeah. Yeah, man. Okay. Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, speaking to, I, I love that you addressed uh, White Church America and White Church Canada um, and just, you know, Church America, Church Canada. Um, the church period. The church. The church. I think, um, I think also, you know, there's a, uh, uh, we need to take a hard look, a hard audit at the practices and the things that we do. And I think that our leaders and our upcoming next generation leaders who are going to be leading churches need to take a serious audit at the things that they do um, and to separate the things that are politically and societally charged, the traditions that they have. Uh, versus the things that Jesus actually calls and commands us to do in regards to society and treating of people. And I think of how many churches and examples of pastors who use their pulpit as political platforms yeah. um, to, to sow mentalities as to why you should vote and who, um, and Christian, lead, Christian leaders in general, not just pastors, but, you know, I, I remember when Donald Trump was being voted in, and I remember how much of the, I was actually really disheartened. I, I remember how much of the uh, of white America church that I was following on social media because I, I, um, I really admired them for the spiritual ground that they're taking and stuff and how they spoke out about Donald Trump being God's president and everything like that. And I, and I'm not, I don't want to debate that. I'm not trying to debate whether or not Donald Trump is good or bad. That's not what I'm, what we're here for. But I think that, you know, you're, you're in a position of influence. And so there's literally millions of people that are watching you at times. And so I think that it needs to be better stewarded and you need to take serious audit of the things that you take stands for. Um, and if we're, if we're contextualizing that now to racism and to uh, societal equal equality, uh, you need to make sure that the things that you say um, don't just boost one race of people and disenfranchise another. Um, I, I, you have a platform. Okay, you've got responsibility. We here are beginning to have a platform. We have a responsibility. We're not going to go. We're not going to hate on white people or we're not going to hate on the majority race or anything like that. There's a responsibility that if we're going to promote something, we're going to promote something that, that everyone rises in. And if we're going to denounce something, it's because it is straight up. It's just, it's just horrible. But there is a platform and there is a responsibility you have to take. And so for the people that are watching it, that you have you know, a stand take serious um, spiritual audit as to, you know, the things that you have that are, at, that sometimes are maybe politically charged versus them being actually what, uh, what the gospel has called you to do. And that's just from a Christian perspective. I'm not even, you know, I know that there's a wide range of people who are listening who may not uh, be of the faith. So. Reem? Yeah, one other thing I would say would be, you know, we were talking about rioting earlier um, and we talked about, positive riots versus uh, some of the ones that are not so positive. I think if we look back and then going back to MLK, it's okay to riot. And we said that, we, we spoke to that, it's okay to riot, but what we need to do sometimes is, is step back and actually have a game plan. So yeah. think through what we're going to do. So whatever it is that we're doing to try and, and, and bring awareness to the injustice that is out there, we need to not just um, operate off of the emotions and off of our feelings, we need to step back come together as a, as a group of people and, and include kind of what Jonesy was speaking to in terms of getting people from other races together and bringing unity in a, in a group of individuals from different walks of life coming together and coming together for a, a game plan for uh, the purpose of, uh, of, of long-term change. Yeah, look at Hong Kong and how they're protesting and how they've joined the masses together to try and do peaceful but forceful protests. Mm -hmm. I, I would. I, the only thing I would add to kind of conclude this, 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 this segment could be its own episode, guys. I think we can all agree with that, just because of what we've talked about, what we've covered. Um, we are. It's important for people to know this, and I, I, I'll speak this to white Christian Canada, white church, whatever the words that Andrew and Adam used. And we're nine men here. There are moments where we all agree on the same thing. 
And then there are moments where we disagree. Um, and there's beauty in that because we're all individuals. We're not all the same person. Every one of us have our own identities and stories and all that sort of stuff. And so we're good. There's please don't rope us all into one grouping. Stefan said it, we're, we're our own names, we're our own stories. How we have experienced being minorities is going to be similar in many respects, but also different. And that's what makes this show and our friendships so beautiful to use such a, let's use that term because there legitimately is so much diversity, even in, even in among us. And, you know, I know for, for some, for some of us, there is, um, you know, we might be the only black friend that you have, depending on who you're watching. And you might feel like you're overwhelmed because you're like, I don't know who else. You now have nine or 10 other friends you can email or DM or ask questions of. And we're going to have different responses. There are other advocates and, 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 and people on and social media who are saying some really incredible things about race relations and injustices, not only to, to black people, but to a, a, across the board for different minorities, ask questions, send emails, sound ignorant, sound dumb. It's okay. It's better for you to sound dumb and to get help and to learn than to keep it to yourself and, and never learn anything and stay yeah. within that ignorance. So don't be afraid of that. And then last thing I'd say is for us who are minorities, let's not chop each other down because we disagree. Let's not chop each other down when we disagree. If you feel that people should wear their pants up and tuck in their shirts and they don't, don't throw them, don't throw them aside and vice versa. But let's do this together. Let's keep the main thing, the main thing and worry about the intangibles later on. Um, we're going to, we're going to close this section off here. Uh, this has been a really good conversation. This has been the house of common show.